welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to 1548 in the reign of King Edward VI. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 28th of April 1548, although some sources say the 6th of May 1548, Courtier, diplomat, soldier and keeper of Oatlands Palace, Sir Anthony Brown, died at Byfleet in Surrey. He was aged around 48 at his death and had been one of Henry VIII's most important and richest courtiers. Brown was the son of another Sir Anthony Brown who served as King Henry VII's standard bearer and lieutenant of Calais Castle. And our Anthony Brown followed in his father's footsteps as a loyal servant of the monarch. His first appointment at the royal court was in 1518, when he was appointed as surveyor and master of hunting for a number of Yorkshire properties. In the same year, he also served in a diplomatic capacity on an embassy to France. Brown was close to the king throughout Henry VIII's reign and his appointments and offices included Privy Chamberer, Knight of the Body, Lieutenant of the Isle of Man, Ambassador to France, Royal Standard Bearer, Privy Councillor, Master of the Horse and Captain of the Gentleman Pensioners. His good friend the king appointed him as an executor of his will and guardian of Prince Edward and the Lady Elizabeth and left him the sum of £300. It was Brown who informed King Henry VIII that he was dying in January 1547. Brown, along with Edward Seymour, Earl of Hertford, informed Edward and Elizabeth that their father had died. Brown was married twice. First, Alice, daughter of Sir John Gage, who gave him seven sons and three daughters. Wow. And then in 1542, he married 15-year-old Lady Elizabeth Fitzgerald, daughter of Gerald Fitzgerald, 9th Earl of Kildare. They had two sons together, Edward and Thomas, but sadly they both died in infancy. Brown also had two illegitimate children, Charles and Anne. Interestingly, Sir Anthony Brown was involved in the falls of two queens. In 1536, according to Lancelot de Carl, secretary to the French ambassador, Brown reported to the Crown that his sister Elizabeth, Countess of Worcester, who was one of Queen Anne Boleyn's ladies, had defended her own behaviour, possible adultery, by saying that it was nothing in comparison to the Queen, who allowed members of the court to come into her chamber at improper hours, and that if her brother did not believe her, then he could find out more from Mark Smeaton. She then said, I must not forget to tell you what seems to me to be the worst thing, which is that often her brother has carnal knowledge of her in bed. Then, in 1540, Brown was involved in the fall of Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife, giving a deposition regarding the king's first disastrous meeting with Anne at Rochester on the 1st of January 1540, when he accompanied the king as his master of the horse. He told of how he was dismayed at Anne's appearance and thought that the king's highness should not content himself with her. According to Brown, when the king met Anne, Brown noted in the king's highness's countenance such a discontentment and misliking of her person as he was very sorry of it. The king told him after the meeting that he could see nothing in this woman as men report of her and I marvel that wise men would make such report as they have done. Brown's deposition was used as evidence of the king's unhappiness with Anne and the idea that he'd been deceived into marrying her by false reports on her appearance. Sir Anthony Brown died on either the 28th of April, as I said, or the 6th of May 1548 and was buried with his first wife in a tomb in St Mary's Church, Battle in Sussex. He was a wealthy man at his death, owning about 11,000 acres of land in Sussex and 8,500 in Surrey. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 28th of April 1603, Queen Elizabeth I was laid to rest at Westminster Abbey in a lavish funeral. Find out more in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. And on this day in 1536, in the lead up to Anne Boleyn's fall, there were long council meetings. 
experts were being consulted and the Lady Mary, Henry VIII's eldest daughter, was being given hope for the future. Something was going on and you can find out more in my video on that which I'll give you a link to as well. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can of course give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. -bye.